Chapter 1, Genome Sequencing of Darwin's Finches. From 1831 to 1836, Charles Darwin traveled the world aboard the HMS Beagle, making many observations about the plants and animals that he encountered. Darwin's observations of birds on the Galapagos Islands off the coast of South America are particularly well known. At least 13 species of finches live on the Galapagos Islands. These birds have been grouped into species based on beak size and shape, feeding habits, and breeding behavior. As Darwin originally suggested, the many types of finches living on these islands are believed to have evolved from a common ancestor species that arrived from mainland South America, as shown in the tree. The original population of finches probably arrived in the Galapagos Islands about two million years ago and then competed for the limited resources available on each of the islands, which differ in size, habitat, and ecology. As in any population, there were variations in traits and behaviors within the original bird population, so different types of finches were able to colonize and survive in each habitat. Over time, due to natural changes in the genetic material of the finches, and selection for those variants that competed most successfully in each environment, further divergence in the traits between groups of birds occurred. One easily visible trait that varied between the groups of birds was beak shape. The shape of the beak affects the bird's ability to eat certain types of food. For example, birds with blunt beaks could break open large seeds, while those with pointed beaks could capture and eat small insects. Birds with certain types of beaks were more likely to survive and reproduce in specific habitats in which one or another food source predominated. As additional genetic variation occurred, birds with different beak shapes became separate species and no longer interbred. This is an example of natural selection. Organisms diverge into separate species as they become specialized to eat certain food types or thrive in specific habitats. What are the underlying causes of the physical differences seen among these finches? Let's think about how the morphology, or appearance, of the birds is related to their DNA. DNA is the molecule that stores information in cells and serves as the blueprint for building an organism. The genetic information dictates the structure and function of each finch and is transmitted from one generation to another as the birds reproduce. Since the genome of an organism, that is, all of its DNA, encodes genes that determine its appearance and behavior, we would expect that birds with blunt beaks would have different DNA sequences than those with pointed beaks. By comparing the genomes of the birds with different types of beaks, we might even be able to determine which parts of the DNA, which specific genes, would cause a bird to develop one kind of beak or another. As you can see in this example, Birds with pointed beaks have a C in their DNA at this position, while birds with blunt beaks have a T. How might such a study be done? One team of biologists compared the DNA of the many species of finches found in the Galapagos, trying to distinguish sequences that were similar and sequences that varied among groups of birds. As you can imagine, there are many differences in the DNA sequences between birds of separate species but there are also differences within the same species, as the DNA of each bird is unique. Is it possible to find particular sequences in the DNA that would account for changes in beak shape in the finches? The biologists focused on species that were closely related, but had differently shaped beaks. This way, they were less likely to identify variation in the DNA that contributed to other differences between the birds. This approach allowed the scientists to find previously unknown genes that influence beak shape. As you can see in this figure, differences in DNA sequence in region C of the genome did not associate with beak shape, while differences in sequence in region D did. In this example, birds with pointed beaks had the DNA sequence represented by the green block, while those with the blunt beaks had the DNA sequence represented by the blue block. Altogether, the team of biologists found 15 regions of the genome that fit this pattern of variation, and thus were good candidates for genes affecting beak shape. Of these regions, six were known to be involved in craniofacial development, 
so would be likely to affect the way the beak is shaped. One region identified this way contained a gene called ALX1. The ALX1 gene encodes a protein, also called ALX1, that plays a role in turning on other genes, some of which are necessary for normal craniofacial development in vertebrates. Additional research on AXL1 will shed more light on its functions, the genes it controls, and how it may affect beak shape in finches. Researchers have identified at least two other genes as possible contributors to the size and shape of the finch beaks. These include BMP4, a growth factor involved in bone and cartilage development, and HMGA2, which is associated with variation in beak and body size and affects craniofacial structure. Studies continue in an effort to learn exactly how these genes may affect beak shape. Other interesting information has emerged from genome sequencing studies. Comparisons of the genomes of Darwin's finches elucidate differences between morphology-based trees and those based on the DNA sequences of related species. You can see evidence for this when you compare a tree created by traditional methods of species classification with one created from DNA sequences. In the tree on the left, based on morphology, the sharp-beaked ground finches, the species shown in red, occupy one branch, but in the tree derived from DNA sequence data, these sharp-beaked ground finches now appear in different branches of the tree. Genome sequencing can reveal evolutionary relationships at the DNA level that were not evident from observations of appearance and behavior alone. The kind of study outlined here highlights the relationship and interconnectedness of evolution, genomes, and genetics. The ability of organisms to survive in specific environments can be traced to differences in their DNA. We also need to think about evolution, genomes, and genetics across scales, from DNA molecules to the genes that they contain, which are organized into chromosomes and direct the development of the structure of the bird itself. Changes in DNA sequences affect the physical appearance and behavior of organisms. Understanding the relationships between genes, genomes, and organisms is central to understanding genetics and evolution and to understanding modern biology.